everyone. So the plan for today was to do a reaction to Succession, but I had a boatload of technical difficulties as per usual, so we're going to talk about the French Dispatch instead. I went to go see it on October 30th with my husband and my daughter. Uh, she needed to take a break during Adrian's segment of all times. So uh, we had to go back. I asked her if she wouldn't mind going back to see it on November 4th. Um, and she said it was okay. So the two of us went. Uh, she's almost 14, by the way, in case you're wondering <laughs> just how inappropriate I'm being here. She's not five or anything, don't worry. She took a break during the Chalamet section this time, which I was totally fine with, which I'll get into that in a minute. Am I getting a lot of glare on my glasses right now? Probably, huh? <laughs> my goal is to be spoiler free at this point, and then after it comes out on video, I can do like a more in-depth analysis kind of thing. So I uh, want to give everybody a chance to see it first um before i give away too much overall i really enjoyed it uh the second time i caught a little more you know there's always little subtleties going on on the sides that you you know it's hard to notice at first like for instance there's a <laughs> there's one scene where there's a dachshund uh, dog down in the lower corner just sort of milling around and i didn't notice that the first time so that was cute it was my favorite dog breed so bonus The Concrete Masterpiece is a masterpiece, honestly. I really enjoyed that segment. Adrian plays Julian Cadazzo. He's an art dealer, um, runs a gallery, I believe, with his uncles, played by Bob Balaban and Henry Winkler, um, fantastically, of course. I really don't know what else to say other than hi, Bob Balaban. <laughs> Bob, 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 Bob Balaban. <laughs> It's like Barbara Ann, you know, by the Beach Boys. No? Everybody too young? Cool. I'm almost 43, by the way, so if I make references that are kind of like, what? Yeah. Or if I don't make references that someone younger than me might, you know why. Yeah, Adrian's segment was really good. Julian's one of those characters who's just sort of over the top. And it makes Adrian look like he's being over the top, but I, I don't think that was the case. I think it was the character who was being a little silly at times. He's hilarious. There's some slapstick moments even. It's always fun to see somebody considered a serious actor uh, being able to be silly. You know? He did a great job, but I don't just like it for him. Um, Benicio Del Toro was very good. Very, I was very impressed. Um, I honestly haven't seen him in a lot of things. Pretty much just, I think just the usual suspects. And that, I think that's it. I'm not sure. Um, but he was really, really good. And um, the physicality of his character was just so intriguing. And um, he was he was sort of a, an intense character, but he played it in such a controlled way. It was, it was, it was really impressive. It was almost like a, acting masterclass it was just great and um and him and adrian played really well off each other and adrian's character was kind of manic you know and um kind of all over the place and um benicio's character moses was very kind of subdued and you know controlled as i said and, um it was it was a really funny contrast because um benicio's character is kind of the the kind that Adrian would normally play, you know, that stoic, you know, he kind of has that serious actor reputation, but he's hilarious too. People forget about that. And I'm glad Wes Anderson has brought that out into the forefront. Leah Saito was great too. Um, very vulnerable performance for her, shall we say? Um, yeah, she did a great job too. And, um, and it was nice to have Lois Smith in that segment. So I knew she was gonna be in the movie, but I wasn't sure where so I was really happy she ended up um, interacting with Adrian because she's someone that I like a lot so she's always a good time. 
to be honest, uh, the middle section about the student revolution there, I believe it's called Revisions to a Manifesto. I'm not sure. I'll put the real title up on the screen because I'm pretty sure I got that wrong. So that one, I, despite the presence of Francis McDormand, who I normally like, I still, I, I don't know. I just, I didn't quite connect with that one. It, it seemed too long, which I don't think it was actually any longer than the other two segments. It just, it felt longer. I'm not trying to be a Timothy Chalamet hater or anything, but to me, it felt like he was just sort of doing an impression of Jason Schwartzman. Um, Jason Schwartzman co-wrote the screenplay, so I'm wondering if maybe he wrote the dialogue for that character. Because he, I mean, he just straight up sounds like he's trying to be Max from Rushmore, but a slightly older version. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's just something kind of unoriginal about his character. Um, he feels recycled a little bit. Honestly, was a little bored during part of that, but, um, but that's okay. Cause the rest of it was good. I really enjoyed um, the uh, the segment with Owen Wilson's character where he was driving his bike through town and um, explaining the different points of interest, shall we say, in the town, and um, that was pretty cool. I really enjoyed Angelica Houston's narration um, in the beginning, while the <laughs> while the waiter was climbing the ridiculous amount of stairs and <laughs> ladders. <laughs> it was really it was really funny. I really enjoyed that part. As an Adrian Brody fan, it feels weird to say this, but I think the third section was actually my favorite. Um, Jeffrey Wright was just phenomenal in that segment. He he just has such an, a charisma about him and such his delivery was just beautiful. I mean, I would he could have been talking about stereo instructions and it would have been great. Lieutenant Nescafier. He is fanatically celebrated among cooks, cops, and capitans, not to mention squealers, stoolies, and snitches, as the great exemplar of police cooking. He reminded me of James Baldwin, which I think, according to the dedications at the end, I think that was on purpose, um, because it's dedicated to um, a bunch of different writers, and um, they showed little sketches of each of them, and um, several of them resembled the characters that were in the film, so I think uh, that was probably purposeful that he reminded me of James Baldwin. My only experience with Jeffrey Wright is from Cadillac Records. He played Muddy Waters, and he and Adrian were co-leads basically in that, so unfortunately they didn't get to interact with each other because the way the stories are set up, they didn't, they didn't really converge. Basically the only a uh, thread running through all the stories is Bill Murray's character because he's the editor of the magazine that the writers all work for. And I thought that was kind of nice um, to have some a consistent character in all of the stories. Um, because otherwise it's, I think it kept it from being too disjointed. Um, it helped it flow from one to the other because there would be like a little break in between stories with him working as an editor and talking to the writer about their piece and everything. So um, especially it was most effective in that last segment because he was talking to uh, Roebuck Wright, which is Jeffrey Wright's character, about uh, keeping in something he had cut out and he told him it was the best part of the piece. And I agree that line was uh, very powerful. I'm, I'm glad he told him to to add it back in. Um, the writer said, I couldn't disagree with you more, but uh, I think he, he put it back in. As you come to expect with Wes Anderson, the visuals are just gorgeous and lots of symmetry and everything and a great color palette, you know, the standard stuff and the, uh, the slightly dark humor at, at times and the uh, kind of, I don't want to say deadpan, because that makes it sound like the performances weren't good, but you know what I mean, that delivery that Wes Anderson movies have. Um, what's funny is it's usually the darker the line, the flatter the affect, and I'm, <laughs> it's just so funny to me. I don't know why. It's, um, I have that same thing with Coen Brothers movies, like the stuff that's a little too dark to be funny is the stuff you laugh at most, and then, you know, you kind of feel bad about it for a minute. <laughs> it's kind of like that.
With Wes, I think the draw is his characters and the the way the movies look. That in my that I mean that's the draw for me. I should say, um, I shouldn't speak for everyone, but yeah, it's his aesthetic as they as they say that word is so overused and misused. <sighs> yes, Wes's aesthetic is very pleasing. Um, I just I love the way he does things, you know, the little um, models for old buildings and everything. The, the attention to detail is just remarkable. If I had to give it a grade, I'd probably give it a B plus at this point. Uh, I've seen it that those two times, you know, minus those 10 minutes I missed. Yeah, I, yeah, I would probably give it about a B or B plus, depending on what day you ask me that question. <laughs> So yeah, overall, I uh, really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to it coming out on video and I can uh, rewatch to my heart's content and uh, maybe see some special features and such. If I were to kind of reshuffle my, my Wes Anderson ranking, I would probably put the French Dispatch at number, how about five? Just right in the middle. I think he has 10 movies now, I believe. So that sounds about right to me. Five, maybe on a couple more watches, it might get bumped up to fourth. So <laughs> um, to be honest, my top three are the ones Adrian was in. So maybe it should be number four then if I continue that trend. So those are my thoughts on The French Dispatch as it stands right now. Uh, when it comes out on video, I'll do a more in-depth analysis, as I think I mentioned that before. Um, but yeah, I really I enjoyed it, and I think um, my husband did for the most part. He agrees with me, though, that the uh, that middle segment was the weakest, I think. My daughter seemed to prefer the, the last segment um, with the chef and uh, Jeffrey Wright's character. There's a section in that that's animated. I think that was her main her main draw. She really enjoyed <laughs> draw. That was an unintentional pun, but you can keep it. I'm actually planning on a separate video um, discussing how well Wes Anderson and Adrian Brody work together on their various projects. Um, they're up to five now, I believe, because they just filmed the next one in Spain. I don't know if they're completely done yet or not, but they're working on the next one, <laughs> the fifth one. So I am still working on the ranking. I have the videos kind of set out right now where I'm, I have like my favorites and then my least favorites and then the middle is kind of still jumbled a little bit. So I want to make sure that I'm really that the ranking is final before I start the uh, the videos on that. So it is coming, I promise. I'm hoping um, it'll be ready by next week. I have end up with so many technical issues and time issues and everything. Just I just have issues, really, if we're being honest. So um, yeah, <laughs> that's that. <laughs> Thank you for coming back to the channel. I really appreciate it. And uh, take care, everybody. See you next time.